A sudden stratospheric warming begins 50 kilometers above the surface in the very high altitude jet stream, where a wavy-like disturbance begins to disrupt the jet stream. As the wave grows, it reaches a point where it turns over and breaks, just like a wave hitting a beach. At this point, the wave and its disruption to the jet stream push the jet stream in the opposite sense. So it's pushing the air against the flow of the jet stream and it, it weakens the jet stream. And actually, the whole thing reverses, so you now have flow from the east to the west. At this point, the air starts to fall into the Arctic. And because it's all falling into the Arctic and getting squashed, it starts to warm. So there's no heating going on as such, but you are compressing the air and therefore warming it, and the temperature can rise by as much as 50 degrees in just a few days. So once you've got winds from the east at high altitude, then the next bunch of waves that come up from the lower atmosphere uh, cannot propagate into that part of the atmosphere anymore. It turns out that waves can only propagate when the winds are from the west. So they see this easterly region at high altitude, and now they break lower down than where they did originally. And again, they push the air from the east, and the whole thing moves downwards a little bit. And then the next bunch of waves comes up, they break on the bottom side of this easterly wind, and that brings it down even further and so on until the whole thing shifts down to where the weather is occurring in the lower atmosphere. So as the easterlies burrow their way down through the atmosphere, they eventually reach the top of the weather systems in the Atlantic. At this point, they kind of tickle the top of the weather systems and they weaken them and they shift the jet stream further south. This allows air in from the east into northern Europe and the UK and greatly increases the risk of a cold snap and perhaps even snow.